In this video, I discuss my full experience with this right here, the Level Lock Plus. Now I've been using this uh, smart lock for the last roughly six months or so. And I have to say, I really do enjoy using the Level Lock Plus. Now this is not a perfect product, but it is a really good option if you're looking to add a smart lock to your home. So we'll go ahead and unbox everything here. So inside the accessory package, you have the bolt extender, you have a CR2 battery, Duracell battery. You have a couple of strike plates along with a couple of hardware keys as well. Now you also have the motor, which basically is the brains of the operation. And you have your paddle housing. And this pulls off like that and it connects magnetically. So this piece here bolts into the key housing and then your magnetic paddle goes on top like this. Super simple. Now here is the key housing that we talked about. This is NFC enabled for Apple home key support. That's important. And the key housing of course has the tailpiece and you have the little smart connectors with the pins on there. And finally you have the dead bolt itself, which is capable of extending where necessary. And this little guy connects directly to the motor and it also houses the CR2 battery. Overall, this is just a brilliantly designed setup and it makes installation super simple and super easy. So of course you wanna remove your old deadbolt hardware and you can remove your old strike plate from the door jam. The first thing you wanna do is install the deadbolt and you just use the two included screws and be sure to install it with the arrow facing up. You slide it in like that, snap it into place and screw it in using the two included screws. Super simple installation, like I said, this is just, it couldn't be easier. Honestly, the level lock is the gold standard when it comes to ease of installation. So here's the motor and the nice thing about this, it uses sort of a jigsaw puzzle connection to make sure it connects right into place like that. And then all you need to do is screw in this screw here to make sure it is securely fastened to the deadbolt. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and install the strike plate on the door jam using the included screws. So we'll just do that real quickly. And there we go. So the next step is to install the remaining hardware. So we have our paddle housing, we have our key housing. First thing we wanna do is grab our key housing. You should see the tailpiece right here. You just wanna thread that through the motor and the other two little stems should automatically line up. Make sure the contacts are pointing downward and just slide it on through like that. And there's our key housing installed. So now we just need to grab our paddle housing and bolt it all together. So here's our paddle housing. We're gonna just take off the thumb turn and you'll have your two bolts as well. You just wanna align this little piece here so it matches the tailpiece, slide it in like this and then bolt it all together using the two included bolts. Again, couldn't be any simpler. Screw it in with the Phillips screwdriver. In fact, the Phillips screwdriver is really the only tool you need to install the Level Lock Plus. So here is the thumb turn, just snap it on like that, and it connects magnetically. Now when this product was released, the lock picking lawyer on YouTube showed how easy it was to basically pick this lock. And I mean, that is a concern. It is a legitimate concern. I mean, for $329, one would think that Level would have opted for a more robust cylinder, but they didn't. <laughs> the good news though, you can actually get this thing rekeyed with a more robust cylinder and Level actually notes this in their frequently asked questions section on their website. Now to complete the installation, you want to insert the CR2 battery directly in the bolt. You just want to unscrew the cap, put the battery in like that. And there we go. Now I have to say, I actually like this design because number one, it is super easy to access this battery. You don't need a screwdriver. You don't need to take the, the lock apart like you do with some smart locks. And it's just one single battery to replace. Granted, it's a more obscure CR2, but still it's just one battery. Okay, so now let's walk through the setup of the Level Lock Plus. Now I already have a Level Lock set up in my garage, but now I'm gonna show you how to add a second Level Lock, or if this is your first, to add the first. So just tap Level Lock for the hardware, give your lock a name. So I'll just call it Backdoor, and it's gonna want the location of your lock, and that too is gonna be at Ducky's house, just like the original lock. So it's searching, now it finds the Level Lock, and then all you do is simply tap right here, 
it finds the level lock and it's added to my house just like that so that's really the first step in getting this thing going now these are some optional things you can add home kit support you will need a home kit hub like an apple tv or home pod but that provides obviously siri support remote connectivity etc now i'm going to add my lock to that particular home I only have one just tap continue and now it's going to ask for the home kit setup code and that code's actually on the documentation on the opposite side you'll see it right here there's the home kit setup code beneath my thumb and it will connect just like that and it's connecting and there we go so now we have home kit support Add it to our level lock. That's a big deal because that adds a whole bunch of new features. So now we're going to start the calibration and that it basically just involves closing the door, following the instructions, now unlocking the door and then locking the door again. And this calibration helps to optimize the performance and optimize battery life as well. And once it's finished calibrating, you'll see a message that looks something like this. So all you do now is tap done to exit the calibration. You can go back and do that at any time. All right, so now that we're all set up, we can start using the, the level lock using the level home app. So you can see my garage and there you swipe over to the next lock, just like that. Now you can unlock or lock your door with the level home app. Just tap and hold like that. You'll feel some haptic feedback and then you can release and then it will do its thing. Uh, it has to be in range for Bluetooth unlock as you see there. So if you're out of range, you're not going to be able to unlock with Bluetooth, but the good news is we're using HomeKit as well. So even if you aren't connected to Bluetooth, let me show you right here. I'm going to actually disconnect. I'm actually going to disconnect from Wi-Fi as well, but here's the benefit of HomeKit because yeah, Bluetooth is not enabled, but it doesn't matter. It can fall back over or fail over to using HomeKit instead. And this allows you to lock or unlock your door from anywhere using the level home app. And that's really cool. So you can see back door and it takes a little bit sometimes, but there we go. So you can see unlock down below by Jeff, but now you see lock by home kit. So now let's talk about some of the settings in the level home app. So if you tap the settings button, you'll see a whole lot of different settings when you tap show more. Now let's go down to the bottom here and let me show you something. If I disable Bluetooth, you're going to notice all the settings are basically inaccessible except for a few so if i tap remove lock you'll see you'll need to manually factory reset the lock when you remove the lock without a bluetooth connection now watch what happens when i re-enable the bluetooth connection when i remove the lock i no longer have to do a factory reset so it needs that bluetooth connectivity if you want the convenience of not having to factory reset the lock now when you go into the about section you'll see battery and this is one of my biggest complaints about this lock the battery status is not granular at all you have no idea what the real battery percentage is and to be honest it's a bit frustrating now of course you can go back and perform another calibration if you wish to do that there's also the works with section so that allows you to switch between HomeKit, Amazon Sidewalk, or just Bluetooth only. There's also a boost range option, which basically increases the strength of the Bluetooth signal, but that comes at the expense of battery life. If you find the Bluetooth connectivity to be less than ideal, you may want to try that out. Now, sound is another pain point because this lock makes all sorts of nice little chirps, as you can hear, when unlocking or locking, but the lowest setting still isn't quite low enough for my taste. Okay, so now we have auto lock. And what this will do, as the name states, will automatically lock your door after a certain period of time. And this works okay, but the level lock has no idea if your door is closed or not. And along with auto lock, there's also auto unlock. Now here's the thing, auto unlock only works when you leave your home boundary. So roughly 200 meters from your residence. And then when you return, then auto unlock is ready to use. And it will use that Bluetooth connectivity to auto unlock your door. Uh, it will use location services. So it does require access to your locks location so they can set a home boundary. So it knows when you've left that home boundary and you have returned to your home in Bluetooth range and then auto unlock will initiate. Now, I don't normally opt for auto unlock, but when I tested it, it worked fairly well. Uh, there's also touch to lock, and this is definitely something I recommend having enabled. You can set it for one to three minutes, and it does exactly what you would expect. You touch the lock, and it locks your door. All right, so finally, there is touch to unlock, 
and you set the amount of time that touch to lock is available as you approach your door. So if, for instance, you have a long driveway and it takes you a while to walk to your back door or whatever the case may be, uh, you wanna set that to probably two to three minutes. It does use your location services as well to set that home boundary. And also you can only use one auto entry feature at a time. So if you enable touch to unlock, it will disable auto unlock. So just something to keep in mind, uh, you can't use both as you can see right here. So we'll go ahead and test out touch to unlock. Just touch like that and you can see the lock unlocks. Now, if you have multiple level locks, you can simply swipe like that to switch between each settings panel for each respective lock. You'll find a dedicated share access tab in the level home app, and that includes shared access for people, passes, and cards. So we're gonna start off with people. You can just type in an email address to invite an individual to access your home. So that's what I'm gonna do now, and then you can select which locks at your home you wanna give access to. So in this case, I'm just gonna do back door and then customize. You can set up as a guest or an admin. Admin has unrestricted access and can invite others to access your lock. So definitely someone you should trust. Uh, I'm gonna set up a guest here though. You can set it up for always access, temporary access like this. So setting a specific day and time, or you can set a recurring access. So you can set certain days between certain times. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., whoever I invite can access the home. All right, so just tap send invite, and that person should receive an email. You just tap accept invitation. They'll need the Level app installed, but then once they do have that, just tap get started. And you can keep it set up as a temporary account if you wish, but if the user logs out or uninstalls the app, they'll lose access completely. So depending on the circumstances, maybe best to set up that account. So now I've accepted the invitation. Now I have access to Ducky's house between these time periods. So I can just unlock like this. And then we'll look at the activity history here on our other phone once the unlock is complete. And you should see, hopefully, uh, there you go. Unlocked by Melvin, just like that. So now I want to show you what passes are. Now these are basically for specific events, for instance, a pizza party. So you can again, choose your house in which locks you want to uh, give access to. So I'll go ahead and continue. And then you can go ahead and set up the time period. And since this is an event, it's basically just one set block of time. You send that over. So all they need is the link and then tab get started to accept the pass invitation. And you can create account or continue as a guest, swipe to accept, and there you go. So you can see access available only for a limited time, but you do have access. So you can unlock and lock the door and we'll look at the activity history and see what we have here. So, so you see the updated activity history unlocked by guest, just like that. And then finally on the sharing tab, you have cards. So uh, I have two NFC cards here. There's also a mini card here that you can purchase separately. You get two NFC style cards, full size cards in the box. So we'll go ahead and tap the plus button. And then you simply just place the card behind your phone like that. It'll find your level card via NFC. And then you can just give it a name. So I'll say, what is this card for? Well, it's for granny. So we're gonna go through the same steps, give access to a particular lock. And there you go. So that card has been added. Now you can always go back in any of these categories to update the uh, permissions if you wish to do that. So you just tap granny, you can change the permissions there or rev revoke access outright. You can also check a card to see what it's assigned to. So you can see this is granny's card there. But let's go ahead and add another. So here is the mini card. We'll just do the same thing. And we'll assign this card to mom. How about that? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set up access, save the card, and there we go. So now, two cards ready to go, and a little bit later I'll show you how to unlock your door with those NFC cards. But now let's briefly touch on activity history. I already showed you this a little bit in some of the earlier moments, but this is a really nice feature. It gives you details on who unlocked or locked your door and the time that it occurred. And you can see you tap on here, that takes you directly to the activity history tab as well. And you can see it's some pretty verbose, I mean, it's not extremely detailed, but 
Uh, it's nice. I wish HomeKit had this built in as well for locks, but it does not. So I just locked my door with this mini card and that is a sign as you saw earlier to mom and you can see in the activity history, it says unlock by mom. And we'll do so with the full size key card to lock the door and you can see that's gonna be updated as well. Okay, so let's talk about HomeKit setup because if you really wanna take advantage of everything this lock has to offer, you obviously wanna set up HomeKit. So with HomeKit, you can go into the Home app of course and lock or unlock your door right there from the home tiles. Just like that, pretty simple, straightforward to the point. But you can also use automation. So if I go into the automation tab, I can select create new automation and I'll use my door sensor and use that as the basis for my automation. So basically when the door closes, go ahead and lock the door. So I'll close the door like that. There's the sensor and you can see it locks the lock just like that. And of course, HomeKit means access to Siri. So you could just say something like, is the back door locked? And it says the lock is locked. Should I unlock it? Yes, go ahead, why not? And it'll do its thing and unlock using Siri. And of course you can control your lock via your Apple Watch, via the Home app, and use the Apple Watch with Siri to unlock or lock your door. So let's go ahead and ask Siri, is the back door unlocked? The lock is unlocked. So I'll just ask her to lock the back door and coming right up. So, I mean, that's really handy to have, of course, controlling your lock right there from your wrist. But here's where it gets really interesting. Apple home key support. And this feature allows you to use the NFC radio in the iPhone and in the Apple watch to unlock or lock your doors. And this can all be done simply by tapping your phone or your watch to your lock. So now that home key is available, let's go ahead and tap on continue. And you wanna go ahead and enable express mode. This allows you to unlock or lock your door without requiring you to authenticate with face ID or passcode because basically it prior authenticates you when you turn this mode on. So if you wanna see your home key, you can find it in the wallet app in iOS. So there is the home key. Now you don't actually need to open up the wallet app to interface with home key. Let me show you how this works. You just tap your door like that. And this is with express mode disabled. So you see, I have to authenticate using face ID or passcode to unlock my door. But with express mode on, notice no authentication necessary. You simply tap the door and it unlocks like that. And here is my Apple watch with the home key as well. In the same principle, simply tap the door with the face of the watch like this. And it unlocks just like that. Now, what's really cool is that you only need one home key. So that will work with multiple level locks, as you can see here. So this is my garage lock using the same home key. Now here's the back door and using home key. And you can see it's just slightly awkward to position that iPhone right against the NFC sensor and a little bit more awkward with the Apple Watch, primarily because of the way my door is oriented. If you're looking for the most unassuming smart lock out there, then look no further because this is the most minimalistic smart lock and it has a lot going for it, especially the home key support, which is still a very rare feature in today's smart locks. Now the downside of having such a minimalistic lock is that you don't get a keypad built in, which some of the other competitors have, and it's a really nice feature. My wife hates to fish her iPhone out of her purse. She would rather have just a keypad. Now Level does sell its own keypad, which can be placed pretty much anywhere around the lock. Uh, so you get more flexibility, but it is an $80 addition if you want the keypad. So as I've outlined in my hands-on diary, this is not a perfect product, but depending on your needs and aesthetic preferences, this might be the best smart lock for your needs. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section and be sure to check out these other videos for more. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.